Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. Anne has 10 coins of the same kind. The coins have the same value as $1 and 6 coins. What type of coin does Anne have? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'll walk through the solution to this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so one more time before we see the answer. So the question is, Anne has 10 coins of the same kind. In other words, it's only one type of coin. The coins have the same value as $1 and six coins. What is the coin? What type of coin? does Anne have? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer, she has a quarter. All right, so how did you do? Well, if you figure this out, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, in my book, you definitely get a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in solving basic uh, math word problems that involve money. And this particular problem, I'm going to be using algebra, but I didn't want to say solve this algebra word problem because when people hear the word algebra, at least a lot of people, they're just like, algebra, I don't want to do algebra. You know, algebra gives me a headache. Well, listen, uh, you could have very well saw, used another method or another approach or trial and error to figure this problem out, okay? And I think uh, this is definitely achievable if you understood the question. But I want to be using algebra because algebra just makes things so much easier. And if you didn't understand this problem at all, I'll have you looking like this person in a couple of minutes. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the solution. So first things first, first we're dealing with a math word problem. You always want to use the rule of three when you're dealing with a math word problem. And the rule of three is just basically common sense. In other words, don't read the problem one time and just start doing stuff. Force yourself to read the problem at least three times. So what you're doing here is creating a habit, okay? So, you know, you'll just get into the quote-unquote habit of reading a problem one time. Like, okay, I understand what's going on. But reading it again, really taking in, in, uh, in the information and letting your brain kind of catch up with the information so you can start off the problem using the best strategy. Okay, so in other words, you're, you're giving your your uh, brain a chance to think about the problem and understand the question. Because here's what happens. A lot of uh, students or people to be like, oh, I understand the problem. I know exactly what to do. Though. I'm going to do all this. And then they go, wait a minute. That doesn't seem to be making sense. Uh, wait a minute. Let me go back to the problem. Let me reread the problem. Oh, boy. Uh, you know, I should have just, I should have taken this road. And then what you're going to do is you're going to be wasting a bunch of time. And that is not good. And you can avoid all that oftentimes, not all the time, but more than, um, uh, more often than not, you can avoid, you know, taking the wrong path if you give your chance, give your brain a chance to think about this. All right, so I know I'm kind of long-winded about the rule of three, but it is very important. Okay, so what is the question here? Well, the question is, what type of coin does Anne have? So she has ten coins of the same kind. Okay, in other words, she has, in this particular case, we know she has a quarter, but we don't know if she has like a penny or a nickel or something else, but we do know that she has a coin. So in uh, the U.S. currency system, you know, we're talking about, you know, three potential um, scenarios, right? She can have a penny, she could have a nickel, or she can have a quarter, all right? So that is a coin, and of course, a dollar bill is a dollar, okay? One dollar is a dollar bill, uh, which is a piece of paper. Uh, but anyways, this is the U.S. currency system, just in case you didn't understand uh, what's going on in this problem. Of course, uh, this problem would, you know, have a, an equivalent uh, problem with other uh, currency. Okay, so this situation, what are we going to do here? 
well, we have an unknown value, right? So what is the coin? And what is the unknown value that we're looking for? Well, what type of coin? Okay, what is the coin? So maybe we can use a variable, okay, to represent what's going on. And uh, not only that, we need some sort of basic model uh, to kind of figure this problem out. So what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do, is show you how easy algebra can make a problem like this. So I'm going to let x equal the type of coin. Okay, so x is going to be the value which will tell us the type of coin. So now before I go any further, let's just make sure we understand something. So a penny, okay, one cent, and in terms of decimal values, you always want to uh, express the value of um, coins, okay, anything less than a dollar using the decimal. So a penny is worth 0 0.01, okay, one hundredth of a dollar. A nickel, okay, is worth 0 0.05, of a dollar okay and a quarter is 25 cents and this is equal what 0.25 of a dollar so we're uh, going to let this variable x represent the coin or the value of the coin all right now what are we going to do with this well you know if we have a variable we can't do anything with uh, this variable unless we construct an equation to solve for the variable okay so how do we do that well we're going to have to go back to the problem and although we've read the problem multiple times, once we have a strategy, but like, okay, I'm going to x equal the coin, I now have to read uh, the parts of the problem that apply here. So, Anne has 10 coins of the same kind. All right, so 10 coins of the same kind. So we know that that's what she has. In case she only has 10 coins, she doesn't have anything else. But this part of the problem right here says the coins have the same value. Okay, it doesn't mean she um, has uh, different coins. It just means that the value of these coins is the same as one dollar and six coins. Okay, so this part is very, very important to us figuring out this problem. So we can kind of use this basic model right here. So Anne has ten coins, and the value of these coins is the same or equal to the value of one dollar and six of those coins okay so this kind of basic equation or this basic model is what we need in order to actually write an equation of course you can see i have the actual equation there but we need to understand how i got there right so one dollar and six of these coins is the same in value as 10 of these coins so hopefully this makes sense to you and if this does then we kind of build a lovely equation because we know the coins here or the value of that coins we have this variable x that represents the coin okay, or the value of the coin so we can write this equation as uh, this way okay this kind of uh, model right effectively of what's going on here as the following equation 1 plus 6x, right, this is 6 times the number of coins, okay, so that would be 1 plus 6x is equal to 10 of these coins, or 10x, remember, when you have a uh, number and a variable right next to it, that means multiplication. All right, so 1 plus 6x is equal to 10x. If we solve for x, we will have uh, discovered what type of coin Anne has. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wouldn't interrupt this lovely math video if I didn't need your support. I need your support to continue to grow my channel. Uh, right now I have well over uh, 520,000 subscribers at the time of this video. And uh, maybe in, uh, you know, you're watching this video you know, further in the future and this number is bigger. I mean, I'm very, very grateful to have that many uh, people subscribe to my channel. And uh, as of the time of this video, I have like over 80 million views on my YouTube channel. It's just mind-boggling to me. I mean, my brain is just like, you know, I just can't believe, wow. I can't, well, I'm not sad about it. Actually, I'm very happy about it, but I just can't believe I reached that many people, okay? But why am I on YouTube? I've been on YouTube for over 10 years. Why do I do this, okay? Well, I do this because I want people to get better at math, okay? I want people to learn math. Math is extremely important, and, and, and unfortunately right now, the trends uh, for math proficiency is going down, and that just really bothers me. And I feel, you know, you know, like, hey, if there are people out there that are not getting the right amount of instruction or support, I want to do something about it. But I need to reach those uh, people, and the best way I can reach those people is to ask you to support me in my mission. And the best way to support me is to simply hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. 
Okay, so thanks for giving me a moment just to kind of blab about why I do what I do. And now let's go ahead and finish this problem up. Okay, so 1 plus 6x is equal to 10x. So remember, this is our uh, kind of model of what the problem is saying, that 10 of these coins, okay, and x represents these coins, has the same value or is equivalent to $1 and 6 of those coins. So 1 plus 6x is equal to 10x. So let's just solve this basic algebraic equation. And uh, what, we're not, what I'm going to do here right here is I'm going to subtract the 6x from both sides of the equation. So typically, we like to have our variables uh, to the left-hand side of the equation and our numbers on the right. But it doesn't have to be that way. As long as you have all the numbers on one side and all the variables on the other side, that's what really uh, uh, counts. And it's just easier in this particular equation just to, uh, to subtract 6x from both sides because when I do that and add down... But I'm, I'm going to get 1, right, because the 6x's are going to go away. So 1 plus, uh, uh, plus 6x minus 6x is 0. So this is 1 is equal to 10x minus 6x is equal to 4x. But no big deal. I have 1 is equal to 4x, and I can kind of just reverse this around. Remember, the left is equal to the right, and I can have symmetry here. The right is also equal to the left. I can just, you know, flip-flop this. So I'll put this 4x here and this 1 here. It doesn't break anything. But now I just kind of like to work with, uh, with the equations where the variables on the left-hand side. So I have the equation 4x is equal to 1. And now let's solve for x by simply dividing both sides of the equation by 4. So x is equal to 1 fourth. And, of course, we can uh, put that into our calculator, or we just kind of see that one-fourth, that fraction, is equivalent to the decimal 0.25. So that coin, okay, has the value of 0.25. And what coin has a value of 0.25? That would be a quarter. All right, so this is how you do this type of problem. Now, again, a lot of you, I think, could have just used trial and error or some other technique, and that is fantastic. That's why I never uh, really tell you, hey, use algebra to solve this, because you should never not attempt to try to solve any problem, okay? You'll be surprised at the type of problems that you can figure out if you stick with it. But remember, in mathematics, you know, something like algebra is a tool, okay? It's a tool. And, you know, it's effectively like, you know, could you, you know, build a house, you know, with just a hammer alone? Well, you know, uh, you know, I don't really know the answer to that question. I suspect you probably can have some basic structure if you just only had a hammer, but imagine how much better things would be if you had a screwdriver and a drill and, you know, whatever, saw and everything else, right? These are tools. And, uh, you know, in algebra, you know, that's what it is, okay? It, it is a mathematical tool that solves problems. And okay? you might be saying, well, you know, what do you do with all this math that you learn? Well, the whole idea is to apply it and solve problems, right? So hopefully this little video was interesting. Now, if you need more help with algebra word problems, well, let me, uh, let me give you a couple quick suggestions. One, I have a ton of word problems, algebra word problems on my YouTube channel uh, for your enjoyment. Uh, now, if you need to learn algebra, then I definitely have to recommend my algebra courses. I have pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two, pre-calculus. You'll see all those courses and the links to them in the description because before you start taking on uh, word problems, remember word problems or solving algebra word problems is an application of the math skills that you learn. So you got to make sure you first have the skills down, okay, then apply those skills to solve word problems. Now, too many students go like, I need to solve word problems. I'm struggling. I'm trying to get better at this. But, you know, hey, you know, if your skills are a little bit shaky, you're never going to get strong at solving word problems or applying your skills. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.